the Lord gave us last September actually on Jewish New Year <clears throat> most of you know that we have a daily prayer ministry in Jerusalem and we haven't missed a day of collective prayer in I guess it's almost 17 years now that we have been in the city <clears throat> and uh, on New Year's Day there was no transportation because of course it's a holiday so our normal folks that come to pray with us, they weren't there. It was mainly the people that were sort of within walking distance that were praying that day, just a few of us. But we sat down at the piano and God began to 
give us that song. And uh, it was a real gift from the Lord to us because I had forgotten that the main prayer, one of the main prayers that's prayed on New Year's Day is a prayer concerning Jerusalem being a house of prayer for all nations. And isn't it wonderful how the Holy Ghost doesn't forget these facts? In fact, a couple of weeks later, we were having a conference and we had invited several rabbis to come and teach us and, uh, and to speak in our conference. And both of them were mentioning the holiday season that we had just passed through and they were mentioning New Year's and, of course, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, and Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles, and Simhat Torah, the Day of the Rejoicing of the Law. And they both commented at different times that the prayer that is prayed on New Year's Day is the house of prayer for all nations. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so sometimes I think the Lord says it so simply. We wonder why there's a, a battle going on uh, in, in Jerusalem and in Israel. And it's basically the enemy fighting God's intent for Jerusalem as a house of prayer for all nations. Amen. That's the basic thing. There are other you know, ABC's under the main point one, but it's God's plan in choosing a people and bringing them to the land to cause them to bless the nations of the earth. Hallelujah. And Satan's fighting that. And, uh, and, and it's all because God's going to have a place still in Jerusalem where folks gather from all over the world unto his name. Praise the Lord. So you folks continue to pray for Jerusalem. Uh, I just spoke to Sister Irene a few minutes ago, and all is well. And we have an Israeli family that are flying in this week to be with us for a while, and they're bringing the whole family right here to camp meeting to live with us for a season. So that'll be a special treat as well. I'm reading this morning from 1 Corinthians <clears throat> Hallelujah. I've got a little bit of a weekend voice, but as I talk, it'll get stronger. So excuse me. It was worse than this when I woke up this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. This is one of my favorite chapters. I don't know. It gets to the place you almost, every time you read, Brother Kirshner, you say that uh, this is your favorite. But uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. <clears throat> And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with enticing, with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling in my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Howbeit we speak the wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, <coughs> excuse me, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. 
for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now the apostle Paul is basically showing us the difference between the natural man or the carnal man and the spiritual man. And he's letting us know that the natural man has a total inability to perceive the things of God. And the reason that he cannot perceive them is because they're only perceived by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Even not only can the natural man not discern them, but the natural man actually thinks that the things of God are foolishness. In fact, to the natural man, the ways of God just are not appealing at all. This is why God has given us the Holy Spirit that we might be a spiritual man. Amen. The life of Christ living within us and this wonderful experience of being filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues is given unto us to enhance the spiritual life within to cause that spirit man to come forth. Amen. In strength and in maturity Maturity. Hallelujah. If Paul were writing and only telling us the difference and the separation between the natural and the spiritual, we would end up reading the chapter feeling so discouraged and disappointed, just feeling, well, what hope do we have if this is in the spirit and I'm in the natural? But that's not the place he leaves us. He lets us know that the Holy Ghost has been given unto us that we might know the things that are freely given unto us of God. Hallelujah. What he is letting us know is that in the realm of the spirit we have a facility of knowing that we do not even have in the realm of the natural. Amen. In the realm of the natural sometimes it takes years to become an authority or to have certain uh, inner secrets in a particular field. And yet I've seen the Holy Ghost when people have been filled with the spirit uh, suddenly drop into their spirit uh, realms of knowledge uh, that were amazing uh, it seemed as if uh, they had always been spiritual one of the things sister susan my associate who's in hong kong at the moment but she always told our young people in our bible school in jerusalem through the years she always said this to them you may be young, but the 
Holy Ghost is very old. <laughs> Hallelujah. You may, as far as your own uh, experience in God, may be a brand new believer. You may have only been serving the Lord a few days, only filled with the Holy Ghost a few hours, but you have all of the wealth of the, of the knowledge of God is available by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah! If we will open ourselves to the Spirit of the living God, I have been amazed through the years in our prayer meetings as I have heard out of the mouths of babes and sucklings perfected praise, out of the mouths of babes and sucklings revelations concerning God that were so amazing that theologians would love to be able to reach in and get a hold of, but little babies, little, uh, little uh, 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 birds in the nest, still in the nest with their mouths wide open being fed by the Lord are speaking forth things and you think oh my I've been in church all my life I've heard the best preachers all over the world I've never heard it said so well described so beautifully why because the Holy Ghost is the, the researcher. Amen. He says this, that eye hath not seen and ear hath not heard and neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God hath prepared for them that love him. But it's not a period there. Amen. If we just said, well, nobody's seen it, nobody's heard it. Nobody's uh, understood it. And we just said, period. And that's where most people stop. But oh no, there's a big comma. But they are revealed <laughs> unto us by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We must be people that allow the Spirit of God to reveal unto us the things of God the things pertaining to the spirit of God amen hallelujah praise the Lord and if we will let the Lord begin to reveal it unto us I'm always thrilled every day practically somebody comes up and shares something they saw or heard or experienced in the course of the meeting. That's what it's all about. Amen. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost making God real in your life. Amen. The Holy Ghost causing your understanding to open. Well, suddenly you know and you know by the Spirit. And you know that knowledge is unshakable. It's immovable. Amen. There are things that God drops into your spirit. You haven't heard it. You haven't seen it. Sometimes God gives you a vision or sometimes he speaks in your ear. But sometimes he just drops a, a piece of knowledge within. You haven't heard words so you can't say he said and then quote the words. You can't do that. You, you haven't seen a vision so you can't say well I saw and described. Describe what you saw. But suddenly that something came within and you knew it. And I tell you, you can stake your life on that knowing. Amen. You may not have any experience in certain realms. I recall when before I went to Hong Kong as a young girl, the Lord had spoken to me. I was planning to go off to college at that time. And the Lord told me that if I would seek his face, he would give me his wisdom and his knowledge and I, I discovered this when I got to Hong Kong, that it was not only wisdom and knowledge concerning the word, 
but it's wisdom and knowledge concerning all that pertains to life and godliness, isn't it? Amen. It's all that pertains to our life and being effectual for God. I used to sit back because God immediately, when I was in Hong Kong, put me in contact with uh, at that time, uh, my friend was the director of full gospel businessmen for all of Asia. And uh, I was in contact with millionaires. Hong Kong in that day had probably more millionaires uh, than any other city in the world. And, and still today, there's quite a large number uh, of the affluent. But as I would sit, these businessmen would ask me questions. Here, are, first of all, I'm living on $50 a month, never had any business experience, uh, come from a little faith walk uh, in, in little Ashland, Virginia, uh, had a couple of revivals away from home, but only those were sort of in the mountains of Virginia. And, and I'm over there, and I used to be amazed. It was like I was sitting here, and I was listening to someone answering here. I was amazed again and again the wisdom of God that came out of my mouth. Why? Because he says this, that he will cause you, amen, to know by the Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It works wherever you are. I remember one time, when, the first time that I went down to see Emperor Haile Selassie. And I was sitting in, in uh, the audience chamber. And we had talked about several things. And then I said to him, Your Imperial Majesty, I have a word for the Lord, from the Lord for you. Would you like for me to deliver it now? Meaning just that it, there was a palace minister there, His Excellency Tefetawarka, uh, and uh, if the emperor didn't want somebody to be present, uh, this would give him an opportunity to ask him to leave the room. But he turned to the palace minister and he said something in Amharic, uh, the local language, and then he turned back to me and he said, you may deliver the word of the Lord. And I began to give the, the prophecy. I closed my eyes and I began to prophesy. And I found myself giving a sentence and stopping. And then another sentence. Now, I had never prophesied like this before. I knew the flow of prophecy. I knew that when you opened your mouth, you just started prophesying and it came like a river until the Lord put the stop on it and that was it. I had never had it happen to me like this. But, and I said, sort of in between sentences, I said, Lord, what are you doing to me? I didn't know what was happening. But this sentence and a pause, a sentence and a pause, a sentence and a pause. And at the end, I opened my eyes after I had finished and had prayed a moment. I looked up and the emperor was still praying. And then I looked over and I suddenly knew what had happened. For the palace minister was busily writing. And the emperor had turned to him and said, Take down the message of the Lord. And you know, if the emperor had said to me, well, would you give it at dictation speed? At that time, I had never dictated anything. I, I wouldn't have known. I probably would have gotten a little nervous about uh, trying to give it uh, at dictation speed. I didn't know it in the realm of the natural, but I knew the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. And if you know the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, know the Spirit of God, no matter what the new situation is, you may not know it in the realm of the natural, but the Holy Ghost, who knows? Hallelujah. He will be with you. Cause
causing you also to be effectual. Amen. That tremendous effectualness of the Holy Ghost. We are so blessed. Now let me say this. We do not appreciate sufficiently the work of the Holy Ghost in our lives. In the early years of what became known as the charismatic renewal, I had traveled all over the world and prayed for leaders, missionaries, uh, uh, pastors, evangelists, uh, priests and nuns from all over the world to be filled with the Holy Ghost. But let me say, once we're filled with the Spirit, we're not following on sufficiently by praying in tongues as we should. Amen. I know we speak in tongues and sing in tongues when we are praising the Lord. But there is a realm of revelation that God wants us to flow in continually that necessitates necessitates our speaking more in other tongues. If I'm going into a situation where I want a lot of revelation knowledge, I spend the time beforehand priming the pump by speaking in tongues. Do you understand? I just fill it up speaking in tongues, praying in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Here's what Paul says in that same chapter. Notice verse 7. We speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Do you understand what he's saying? When I'm speaking in other tongues, I'm speaking wisdom. I'm speaking hidden wisdom. I'm speaking the wisdom of God, but I'm speaking it in a mystery. Amen. I don't know. I'm speaking it in a mystery, but even that, speaking in tongues and speaking his wisdom in a mystery, this is the wisdom that God has ordained to bring glory into our lives. Amen. Amen. When you begin to realize that it is a channel for that increased glory of God that he wants to bring into your life. Amen. And you begin to pray in tongues. I'm speaking the mystery of God. I'm speaking the wisdom of God. I'm speaking the hidden wisdom. Amen. But he lets us know in the next verses it doesn't remain hidden. Amen. It doesn't remain hidden because then the spirit of revelation begins to work in and through us. Hallelujah. As verse 9, as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Notice the latter part of verse 11. Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. When I pray in other tongues, I am speaking the wisdom of God in a mystery. And I tell you, if you speak the wisdom of God enough in a mystery, it's not going to remain hidden, hidden wisdom. You're going to find yourself in situations in which you somebody says something and then something comes out of your mouth and you say, Oh, where did I get that wisdom from? <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It came because you had been praying more 
in other tongues, magnifying the Lord. This is why the Apostle Paul says, I speak in tongues more than ye all. Not only did he say he spoke in tongues more than ye all, but he also said this again and again in the book of Acts. Uh, we find concerning Paul and also in his writings to the churches, he said, I only went up to Jerusalem by revelation. I only did this and that by revelation. He he speaks and gives credit to revelation more than any other writer. Why? Because he likewise had been speaking more in other tongues. Periodically, I like to preach on this verse because if nobody else gets stirred, I always stir up myself and find myself spending much more time praying in other tongues. Oh, Harabashi and I. Oh, Barisi am I. Brother David Duplessis was a good friend of mine. He said to me, he said most of my flights, and of course he was doing a lot of flying all over the world. He said, I sit on the plane and I pray in the spirit from the time I leave until the time I arrive. Why? He didn't know what he was going to face in the new places he was going. God was sending him into new territory. He was going into, into uh, areas that had never been reached before. He needed that revelatory knowledge. Amen. That flow of the Spirit of God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. It doesn't make any difference how long you've been saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Because it's available for you. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We have one of our sisters in uh, Tiberias. She has uh, been a believer in Jesus just a short time, an Israeli lady, but she has the most wonderful visions and revelations. God shows her things about people. She probably could hardly quote 10, uh, well, I'm sure she couldn't, I know she couldn't quote 10 scriptures. I started to say 10. I, I don't know if she could quote one scripture uh, verbatim, amen. But God has brought into her spirit such revelation, knowledge. She's just uh, young in the things of God. But as I said, the Holy Ghost is very old. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is ordained unto our glory. Amen. Amen. You know, people that are against speaking in other tongues, they say, um, well, all it does is edify yourself. Well, thank God. <laughs> If I'm not blessed, how am I going to bless somebody else? If I'm not on top of everything, how am I going to get somebody else on top of everything? But if I am blessed, then I can be a blessing to someone else. I have an Israeli friend who was actually one of the top people in government for many, many years. And one day, he began to speak in other tongues after I'd known him for many years. <clears throat> and uh, he said this to me the next day. He said, Ruth, yesterday when I spoke in that language, that wasn't the first time. I said, it wasn't. He said, no, when I was a little boy, <clears throat> my uncle was about ready to die. And I loved my uncle like a father. And he said, I went out under the stars and I looked up uh, toward heaven and I began to speak in that language that I spoke in yesterday when you prayed for me. 
Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. God in his faithfulness brings that life of the Spirit into people's lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord that may never have heard anyone ever speak of this experience of speaking in other tongues by the Spirit, but it releases revelation knowledge. We have a researcher. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, when, when uh, pro college professors and uh, others, they're doing special papers, they hire somebody to go through the stacks and get the information and Oh my, just to work for them and search out knowledge. But the Holy Ghost does that for us. The Holy Ghost searches out knowledge concerning the Word of God. The Holy Ghost searches out knowledge concerning God and drops it into our spirit, the piece of knowledge that we need at that moment. Amen. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost searches out knowledge concerning what God wants to do in our lives in the future. Amen. He searches Searches that out and drops it into our spirit. God has given me names of cities and countries just in prayer, places I never knew existed on the map. But when I have looked them up and found them, I've traveled those many miles to those places and found that there were folks praying at the moment that the Holy Spirit gave it to me. They were praying for someone to come. Hallelujah. They were praying in the Spirit. Hallelujah. I could stand here all day telling you one story after another of how that God does it. He does it so beautifully. Knowledge that we don't have. Knowledge that we could not consider. Amen. He drops it into our spirit. But it comes because we pray much in other tongues, hallelujah, and let the mind of Christ come unto us. We were down on the Amazon River. I think there were four of us ladies together. This was a number of years ago. In the middle of the night, I heard Sister Susan. She was on the bunk just above me. We were on the boat. We're going down the Amazon. <clears throat> And I heard her say something that sounded so unusual. And she said, from the sands of Zanzibar to the coral of Bora Bora, from Kabaras to Novosibirsk, from the islands to the captives, my people have caught the vision. You know, when you wake up in the middle of the night and you hear something that sounds like a rhyme, <clears throat> my first thought, Sister Susan was raised in schools in England, <clears throat> I thought, oh, she knew a nursery rhyme that we never learned in America. And because uh, we were, well, you know, I was still half asleep. And then quickly it dawned on me, it wasn't a nursery rhyme, it was the Holy Ghost. And I heard myself saying, and I just quickly picked up a piece of paper and a pen right beside my bunk, and I said, Susan, what did you say? Knowing she probably was saying it even half asleep. And I said, what did you say? And she said it again. From the sands of Zanzibar to the coral of Bora Bora, from Kabaras to Novosibirsk, from the islands to the captives, my people have caught the vision. Well, it was a good thing I wrote it down because she couldn't have remembered any of that the next morning. You know, when God said something to you in the middle of the night, you think you'll remember it forever? Well, we remember parts of it, but sometimes we don't remember it all. And the next morning, <clears throat> we were so excited. I mean, she didn't know those places. This was revelation knowledge. 
And we were just waiting because on the little boat we were on, of course, there were no atlases, no maps. We were waiting till we got down to Manaus where the, we were getting off the boat so we could look this up on a map. And we went in and I sat down in a travel agent and I'm pretty good at working airline tickets and, and, and trying to sort it out. But it was such an extensive trip. Zanzibar is just off the coast of Tanzania in uh, East Africa. And uh, Bora Bora is over in the Society Islands near Tahiti. And then Kabarask is the easternmost part of Siberia. And Novosibirsk is where Siberia begins. So God was speaking concerning that whole area of Siberia. And I, I tried to figure it out. And I mean, it was such an extensive trip and uh, so involved. And I just got sort of uh, bogged down with doing it and forgot it. Uh, came back to Virginia and one night, the Lord said, I want you to do the trip immediately. <clears throat> And when the Lord spoke to me, all I could hear was the way God had said it. From the sands of Zanzibar to the coral of Bora Bora. From Kabaras to Novosibirsk. From the islands to the captives. My people have caught the vision. Well, to do it God's way was twice as big a trip. It meant almost twice around the world and we had one month to do it and we did it God's way and from the time that we put our feet on Zanzibar the most beautiful white sand beaches in the world and the Lord had said from the sands of Zanzibar from the time that we did that stopped in Zanzibar till the time we put our feet on Kabaras, which was the beginning of Siberia, we didn't touch down on anything that was not an island. The Lord had said, from the islands to the captives, we went through all of those chain of islands, Reunion Island, Mauritius Island, Australia, New Zealand, Hawaii, Japan, all of those are islands, amen. And then we stepped down on the continent of, of uh, Russia and went across. And you know, we didn't know at first why we were going. God had just commissioned us to go. <clears throat> the first person we said hello to in Zanzibar was Jewish. And from then on, everybody that we met was Jewish. And God took us. In fact, we got to Bora Bora and they, you land at Bora Bora on a coral atoll, and then they take you in a little boat over to the main part of the island, and the man standing on the jetty, waiting for some tourist business, he said, would you come to our, at my motel? We said, you're Jewish, aren't you? And he said, how do you know? Well, by this time, everybody we had met was Jewish. Why did God do that? He took us to show us the dispersion of the Jewish people among the islands of the sea and throughout uh, all of Siberia so that we could believe for their ingathering. Amen. It was part uh, of the Holy Ghost teaching us. Uh, amen. So that we could be effective. Uh, this was uh, before we got the full vision concerning Israel. The last leg of that trip... Uh, we were flying Moscow, New York, Virginia. And camp meeting was starting that night. And we were having someone else speaking opening week of camp. And I got in and my father said, he said, I'm sorry, Ruth, the speaker has called and said they can't come and you're speaking tonight. And I had just done 55,000 miles in one month's time, changing 11 hours every other night. In, in, in time schedule and had flown the last day from Moscow all the way back to Virginia. I came into the service and people didn't even know where we had been. And a little lady in the back that wouldn't have known too much in the natural, she stood up and began to prophesy 
I will say to the north country, give up. Keep not back, my people. Amen. And it was the beginning of God giving us an enlarged burden for the Jewish people to believe God for what he wanted to do in calling them back home to Israel. Oh, hallelujah. We can trust the Holy Ghost. He is the researcher. We must never get to the place that we think we can plan it for ourselves. I have been on some involved in some of the most exciting things that God has done in the last 30 years all over the world. But it's all come by revelation of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We can trust the Holy Spirit. Those things that our eyes have not seen and our ears have not heard and have not entered into our understanding in the realm of the natural God brings us into the realm of the spirit, causes our spiritual eyes to see, causes our spiritual ears to hear, causes us to perceive and to know in the realm of the spirit. Amen. When God drops this knowing, you'd get up without a contact anywhere in the world and travel knowing that when you get there, you're going to find exactly what God has put in your heart by the Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We have within us the Spirit of God that wants to teach us more, instruct us more fully, but you and I must be those that pray more in other tongues. Amen. We're not utilizing. You. You're asking God for another gift. You're asking God for another tool. You're asking God for something else. And we're not using that which he has already given unto us to the full extent and the capacity that he wants to do. Amen. You may pray in tongues and it be hidden wisdom but it will begin to be revealed wisdom as you continue in that flow of the Spirit of the living God and our Heavenly Father. We just declare that we are your people. We thank you, Lord, for the infilling of the Holy Ghost. We thank you, Lord God, that we have been blessed and we want, the Lord, to be those that pray more in the Spirit. Hallelujah. That the mind of Christ might be manifested, might be seen, might be known through our actions, through our activities. Hallelujah. You have blessed us abundantly as a people, but we declare afresh today that the Holy Ghost is our teacher, is our instructor. Hallelujah. We depend upon the Holy Spirit of God. We rely upon Thee. Our dependence is totally on thee if you do not teach us we don't know which way to go or how to go in and come out oh hallelujah but we thank you Lord you are the teacher let's just pray in the spirit a minute if you've never spoken in tongues let the Holy Ghost do that for you right now just let these new sounds come on your lips. Just give your voice to the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's gather here at the front. Everyone, come on up closer. If there's anyone here that doesn't speak in other tongues, I want you to come close. I want to lay hands on you. Halamai. Anyone that doesn't speak in tongues, just come right here and let me lay hands on you. 
Maybe there's some that do, but you need it stirred up a little bit. Hibi baranda. Everyone, let's fill in this area. Hurabira bandi bi 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 bi. Those that don't speak in tongues, the you too, huh? Hurabiandi bi bi. Ha ma 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 ma. Let's all just sing in the spirit. Hibi bi 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 aramandori. Ha ma ma da ba ma ma. The spirits all over you. Just begin to speak. Ha ba 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 sha ba ba da ma na ma ma ma. That's right. I'm gonna be under the cold. Haramanda baba shaba baba baba tia bashi amana. Haba baba banda baba banda ba. Hurbi bianda baba banda babo. Hayari bianda baba baba ba. Just sing in the spirit. Let the spirit of revelation work within you. He be our. Just sing in the spirit. Put a little tune to your speaking. Praising and magnifying the Lord. It's ordained, ordained unto your knowledge, ordained unto your glory. Harabarabiando, Hastiella Marabogri. Yeah, 